Waking up in the morning edition, the government seeks to modernize essential services. The member of parliament for Central and South Eleuthera speaks to the island's economy and naturally Bahamian products are a big hit. It's the last day of the first month of the year and we're just one day shy of the weekend. Good morning Bahamas and welcome to the morning edition. I'm Jiminita Swain. Well, we now start with a check on weather. Joining us now live in studio is of course Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean. Good morning Basil. What's on uh, tap? Good morning Jiminita. The ZNS Tower Cam uh, picking up some patchy clouds over the eastern sector of New Providence and as we go to our satellite picture we do have a little frontal boundary as we can step back just a second uh, over the extreme north western part of the country and that will eventually merge with a frontal system over the southeast Bahamas but in between we'll have some patches of clouds. Outside of our studios few clouds temperature at 64 degrees relative humidity 87 percent. We have near calm Wednesday out of the north at two miles bar the barometric pressure 1021.1 millibars that is 30.15 inches and it is steady. Temperatures around the islands this morning we have 67 degrees in Grand Toll Key also Freeport at 67 Marsh Harbor 67 as well. Taking you into the Berry Island, 71 degrees, uh, 73 in Alistair Bimini, 71 at Harbor Island, Rock San Elutra, 72, 72 in Artisan Cat Island, also in San Salvador and uh, Rumkey, we're picking up more 72s there as well. Clarence Town, Long Island, Crooked Island, 75, 75 also in Betsy Bay, Acklands, Ragged Island, Machi Town, Niagara, the warm spot this morning, this is Turks and Caicos Islands at 77 degrees. And your boating forecast for today, northeast to east winds at 12. 12 to 18 knots throughout the 700 islands. Wave fights, they're going to be around 3 to 6 feet over the ocean. Tidewise, low at 11.07. High tide taking place at 4.52 in the afternoon. And that's going to do it for your first look at what in the morning edition. Stay tuned. Your forecast for today and tonight, still ahead. Well, thanks so much, Basil. Well, of course, for our first check on traffic on our streets, we're going to turn to now uh, Vaughn Albury. Good morning, Vaughn. Thanks very much, Jimonita. We're here on Bay Street, and tonight Bay Street will not be like this where we have a constant traffic flow because it's the 31st annual Junior Jankanoo Parade right here on downtown Bay Street. A lot of schools are participating, but one thing, traffic. Traffic will not be as it is. There are a lot of diversions, and there will be a lot of street closings. We got more on that coming up later, so stay tuned to the ZNS Morning Report. Back to you, Jimonita. Well, thanks, Juan. The government is seeking to modernize essential public services and improve the ease of doing business in the country. House members met Wednesday evening agreeing to a resolution to borrow $30 million from the Inter-American Development Bank for government's digital transformation program. With just the click of a mouse, residents will be able to access and perform various services online. The program, funded by the IDB, will also reduce the cost of conducting business with the government. Leading off debate was Prime Minister Dr. The Most Honorable Hubert Minnis. Dr. Minnis notes that digital users worldwide are demanding better services from their governments. Citizens are more digitally connected and have become far more comfortable accessing services online. There has been increased usage of online shopping, online banking, and other services. And the government, the government must also create a better experience for citizens by making more services available to them online. This administration's 2017 manifesto noted that the economic reality of the day's modern Bahamas dictate <coughs> that we can no longer solely rely on our, quote, insider in historical accomplishments from tourism and banking to sustain us and our economy. Well, to achieve government's vision of digital transformation of services, the Prime Minister says his government's digital program will be carried out through the establishment of the digitization unit within the office of the Prime Minister. Successive governments have attempted to transform the civil service. It is this administration 
that will concretely and systematically address that transformation and hence the creation of the modernization unit within the office of the Prime Minister and the urgent need to borrow the $30 million to assist in this transformation. I wish to state at the outset that the officer with responsibility therefore speaks with the weight of my office. Well, also this morning, the South Eleuthera economy has been struggling for years as employment opportunities dried up and residents migrated to where the jobs were. Today, the Member of Parliament for Central and South Eleuthera, Hein Johnson, believes that the economy is now headed in the right direction. 2019, I think 2019 would be a new beginning for the south, southern part of Eleuthera, especially the deep south. Um, we are hopeful that the Disney project comes off like, like on schedule, hopefully in the next few weeks. We should see uh, the differences there. And just through, just uh, about a mile and a half out of Benamaton, there's a project. It's called the Benamaton um, Beach uh, Resort, which is going to be run by the Butterfields. So those two projects are are basically ready to start. And then we have the Jacks Bay project that, that's going on um, down in Deep South. So, you know, to have those three projects going in the South is going to really bring about a great, great turnaround, a great, great turnaround. Well, Government MP also outlined capital work South Fork South Eleuthera. Getting ready to do the paving of the road. Um, on the Queens Highway will be um, patched and resealed in some areas. We're looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, in the central part of Eleuthera, Port and Sewage has lived up to its promise to, to make sure that we had uh, sufficient storage in central, um, which we're happy about that, so our water shortages shouldn't be um, like we used to. Um, and then, of course, um, the government is looking at bringing on a housing subdivision in the Governor's Harbor area, and we're looking at an area in Roxon and Benamaton, sorry, Roxon and Deep Creek as well. Um, this is quite a bit of activities that's going to be happening in the next few months, and the government intends to, to invest some funding in Eleuthera. So we're grateful for that. Eleuthera has been long overdue. Well, stay with us. There's more news after this short break. It's time to get some love from your bank. Make your 2019 financial resolutions a reality by getting up close and personal with your friends at Fidelity. Make it a date with free financial planning, debt consolidation, and an ASO savings account. Plus, discounted fees and a chance to enter to win exciting prizes like all-inclusive weekend getaways or dinner for two. Terms and conditions apply. Fidelity, we're good for you. Twelve schools, five islands, one big stage. The Music Project presents the third annual high school pop band competition. Saturday, February 16th at the Botanical Gardens. Come witness the nation's hottest high school bands from Exuma, Andros, Grand Bahama, Bimini, and New Providence in fierce high energy competition with special performances by some of the Bahamas' leading entertainers. Gates open at 12 noon and the competition kicks off at 2 p.m. sharp. Tickets are available at Airbrush Junkies and all participating schools. Make your company representative stand out through an embroidery design on your uniforms from Janae's Uniform Center, Chesapeake Road. Janae's utilizes the latest state-of-the-art embroidery technology to monogram large and small quantities of shirts, caps, bags, and other articles. If you don't already have a digitized logo, Janae's can design and digitize your idea and bring it to life. Then install the logo of your choice from their large selections of 27 stock colors of golf shirts in cotton or dry fit, caps, or workwear. Call 394-8385 or 6 or visit www.janae's.com. If you are building or renovating, and if you want a one-stop shop, then We Buy You Sell, your windows and doors specialist, is the place for the highest impact, highest quality, fully laminated hurricane impact windows and doors, life long-lasting PVC frame with steel in the frame, non-rust mechanism throughout the frame. We also have the best prices on porcelain, plank, and mosaic tiles. Visit We Buy You Sell in the old Hasty's Tile Building on Robinson Road. Or call us at 327-6427 or 698-1140. I lived in fear for my life. I lived in fear for my children. I lived in fear of how I'd provide for them. I thought that he would change when he promised he would. And I forgave him every time he said that he was sorry. I became devalued as a human being until one day I ceased to exist as one. Let's talk. 
Call the Palmas Crisis Center's free 24-hour hotline at 328-0922. Sometimes a conversation can change a life. Welcome back. As a result of the Junior Junk New Parade scheduled for 6 p.m. today, the following streets will be closed to vehicular traffic starting at 4 p.m. West Bay Street and Nassau Street. Now, vehicles traveling east on West Bay Street will be diverted south to Nassau Street, Bay Street and Market Street. Vehicles traveling north on Cumberland Street can enter onto Bay Street and will be diverted south onto Market Street or west on Marlboro Street. While well, Avon Aubrey is also still standing by to give us our traffic update. Good morning again, Bon. Yes, Jimenito, we lost the junk canoe at the beginning of the month. This is the last day of the year, the last day of the month, and it's junior junk canoe tonight. With me are principals, two principals, Alicia Ramming of the Deep Creek Primary School, which is now called the Youthful Rogers Primary School in Deep Creek, Sheena Duncombe, principal of the South Andros Senior High School, and Jerome Forbes, he is the district superintendent. Ms. Duncombe, is South Andros ready? Ready, ready. Yeah. Fired up and ready to go. How many did you bring? About 200. 200. Was it difficult? Very difficult. We are actually a combination of five schools. And so the coordination was really, really difficult. But it's something new and we, are, we were ready to jump in. We're, we're so thankful that, that, that South Andrews has been coming for a number of years. What is your theme? This year, we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Bahamas National Trust under the theme, Conserving and Preserving Our National Heritage. South Andrews is ready to tear up Bay Street. But Mr. Forbes, this is now a combination because it's an, it includes a school from Michael. Tell us about that. The Ministry of Education is now combining those smaller districts, amalgamation. And we look at South Andrews High School with a smaller number of students. Some primary schools have 20 or 30 students. We sit among the family islands. Why don't we combine our talent? I went to make one and saw the school as 19 students and about 15 in the band. I said, this band is good. Michael Key is uh, one of the best bands in the Bahamas. So the Andrews, we have good dancers and good talent. We pull them all together to bring the best show on earth on Bay Street this evening. There you have it, Mr. Forbes, Ms. Duncombe, and Ms. Remy. South Andros, as well as Mayor Guana, they plan to tear up Bay Street. They're 200 strong. What? You rest, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, re you ready? Ready. Yes. Ready. All right. Please come out and support Junior Junkanoo. It's the 31st annual Junior Junkanoo Parade, 6 o'clock tonight here on Bay Street. Back to you, Jim Anita. Well, thanks, Juan. And continuing with his legacy, the Chan Pratt Foundation is having an art show tonight. Here to give us details is Chan's son, DeWitt D.C. Pratt. Good morning, D.C., and welcome to the morning edition. So tell us about the Chan Pratt Inspiration. So the Chan Pratt Inspiration, I started in October of 2015. That was the launch for the Chan Pratt Foundation. And um, basically, it's our flagship event. It's a fundraiser that uh, consists of a mixed media art exhibition, but we all also have live music, food, wine, and it's really um, uh, a nice night out, but also a way to pay homage to my father, Chan Pratt. So tell us about some of the featured artists, because obviously it's a night for artists as well. Mm -hmm. So we ha we'll be featuring a few up-and-coming artists. Um, the theme is Recreating Old Nassau. So these artists are one tasked to produce a piece inspired by Chan Pratt, as well as staying in line with the theme of recreating old Nassau um, and it's a, like I said earlier it's a mixed media art exhibition so you have artists who specialize in contemporary realism abstract um, photography and I just really want to see them produce pieces that are inspired by Chan Pratt whether it be subject matter or his style and you know, as a way to pay homage to him as an artist. So as you mentioned, this is of course in benefit of the Chan Pratt Foundation. So tell us, what does the foundation do? So our mission statement is preserving a legacy through art and education. One, I want to make sure that people are aware of who Chan Pratt was and his contribution to the uh, art society in the Bahamas. Also, I established the um, 
John Proud Art Memorial Art Scholarship at the University of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. So we're raising funds for that particular scholarship fund. So obviously most persons would want to know what's different about this particular art show. Well, this art show, like I said earlier, we have such an array of artists that are have to work within a particular theme. Also, we'll be having live music by the Jazz Cats, Willis, Willis and, of Willis and the Illis. Uh, we'll be having, uh, we'll be uh, unveiling our um, Chan Pratt inspired tees that are created by Bahamian brand Brylin, as well as Chan Pratt inspired shoes that are created by uh, Baham. So what we're trying to do is just reach all demographic and make art available for all walks of life. And that's set for 7 tonight? At yes, 7 to 10 at Tapadillo. All right. Well, thank you so much, DC, for stopping by and all of the best of luck with the Chan Pratt Inspirations Art Show tonight. And thanks, Sounds like a spectacular event. Yeah, Thanks we'll again. <laughs> well, we have so much natural things to celebrate in the Bahamas, and we have no idea how blessed we are to live in an island paradise. Now, there are some people who are totally oblivious to all the natural beauty around us, and them are, then there are some who acknowledge natural assets that make us who we are. He has a report on Naturally Bahamian. In 2009, Denise Worrell quit her job to homeschool her children. At the time, she began gardening more and making teas from those plants. She soon realized the benefits that derived from doing so. We have heard research that tells us that people who live in a region are best taken care of health-wise by things that grow in their region. And so for Bahamians, it's to their advantage to do it. But we have a lot of tourists also that come and enjoy the benefits and they have some healing qualities. We have them write in all the time and say how a certain tea has helped them with a certain problem that they were having and so that's always gratifying and they continue to buy the teas even when they have gone back home. The Worrell's Garden also features aquaponics and animal rearing. Today, the home-based business grows, manufactures, and produces an entire line of products from tasty teas to body care items and food. When people um, find out what we're doing, sometimes they would request certain things which we would tailor make for them, but also um, they know the benefits of, for instance, sage or um, the mixture of cocoa butter and cascarilla or, you know, some of the other products that we produce. Um, people who have natural hair usually like the natural hair shampoo. So it strengthens the hair and, and it also darkens the hair. So I would have had a lot more gray if I <laughs> weren't using uh, shampoo. Since starting this venture, Denise says she's noticed how there continues to be a demand for the products as they are safe, economical, and healthy. For more information on Naturally Bahamian's products, you can call Denise at 362-1029. But if you have any other consumer-related issues, call me at 502-3871. And together, we'll figure out who to call. See Ask Adderley, ZNS Network News. Well, for some years, Keandra Gardner and her team have brought to you the Music Project, a music competition for high schools. This event has caught on and Miss Gardner joins us with Andrew Gardner III to tell us about this year's competition. Welcome to the Morning Edition, Keandra and Andrew. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Jiminita. Morning. Good morning, Bahamas. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited about this year's Music Project and Andrew, who um, is the founder and the president of the Music Project, is joining us this year because he's actually been working from the U.S. side in um, Boston with Berklee College of Music where our students get their top prize. So we're so delighted to have him here for this year's competition. Well, awesome, Andrew. So tell us, how many schools have entered this year's competition? What can we expect? So we have 12 schools that's in the competition um, for, from five family islands, including the Providence, Grand Bahama, Exuma, Bimini, and all the way from Andrews, all coming here for February 16th to the, uh, February 16 to just blaze the stage, give the Bahamian, Bahamians an uh, amazing show. 
So I know it's often one of those events that you must be there to feel the excitement yes. of 100%. the students. So are there any new um, competitions, concepts that you're going to unveil during this year's competition? So one of the things that we're doing differently this year um, with uh, the competition is that we're having our mentors do an all-star performance. Yes. One of the biggest things about the music project that we're so excited about is that all of our student bands are paired with notable Bahamian musicians and entertainers to not only get them ready for the competition day, but also to give them what they need to know about the music industry. And so we have some of our most spectacular mentors going to give us a live show that we're so excited about. So you definitely want to make sure that you're there on time at Botanical Gardens because we do start on, on time. time. <laughs> uh, so dates open at 12 uh, noon and competition starts promptly at 2 p.m. And also we have a special treat from Andrew. He's going to be doing a set at the show as well, introducing some of his new music um, coming out. So you don't don't want to miss what we have at the music project this year. So it sounds like it's definitely one of the events that you must attend. That's definitely on the social calendar. Definitely, definitely. And I encourage you to bring the whole family and also school pride. Anybody coming from, you know, we have schools like the Big House, Government House, or Queens College. These are big schools that we know that have big pride. We want you to come in, cheer your schools on, cheer these kids on, and show them that, hey, we support you. We support the future of the Bahamas. Yes, and speaking of the schools that we have participating, we have R.M. Bailey, Government High School, Queens College, Charles W. Saunders Noble Preparatory, Gateway Christian Academy out of Bimini. Yes. Uh, we also have St. George's out of Grand Bahama, Ellen Coakley um, out of Exuma, Central Andrus High. Um, we also have Nassau Christian Academy, Aquinas College um, also participating, and St. Anne's. So you definitely want to come out, show your support to our students. Music is a very important part of our culture, and we are, have an opportunity to get another generation involved in what we're doing in the music project so definitely come out February 16th 2 p.m. at the Botanical Gardens uh, tickets are $10 in advance for students $15 for adults children under five are free so make it a full family day there's something for everyone so join us well thank you so much Andrew and Kayander and um, we hope that this year's music music project is of course the best one ever of course there's so much more coming up after the break so don't go anywhere when you thought the junk canoe season was finished on Bay Street. Downtown Nassau will come alive once again with music and costumes from our next generation of junk canoers. Join the ZNS Network on Thursday, January 31st as we showcase the talents of our youth at the Seoul Petroleum Junior Junk Canoe Parade from downtown Nassau. Live coverage begins at 8 p.m. right here on the ZNS Television Network. Heritage National Park is all geared up to have a fundraiser that's set to attract jazz lovers. Joy Dean, the Interim Managing Director and Human Resources Manager at Clifton Heritage, joins us this morning to give us details. Well, good morning, Joy, and welcome to the morning edition. Now, what inspired this concert, and is it an annual thing? Good morning. 
what inspired this concert is that we, when I say we, I'm talking about the team members at Clifton Heritage, we wanted to ensure that Clifton is placed on the map in the Bahamas because a lot of Bahamians do not know that we are here. And so we would want to just ensure that Bahamians know that we are here and that we are offering so many things. So the jazz event is one of the many things that we have decided to introduce. So, of course, jazz is music, but of course, there's going to be some food and treats and other little interesting things that's yes. going to be happening as well. So, yes. tell us about that. And it's not only jazz we're having, it's actually a culture show we're having as well. Okay, like, can I say who we're sure. going to be tell having? We're it. having our featured artist is Miss Sherelle Cartwright, and the band is Jazz, etc. Very good band. And we're also having a culture show who we will feature action, the Limbo King, and we're also going to have five dancing so it's not only jazz it's for music enthusiasts so we wouldn't want everybody to come so so it sounds like it's gonna be a really really exciting event so remind us when is the concert date and work in person's get tickets sounds yes. like it's gonna be a great night it's going to be awesome it is on February 10th that's a Sunday and it starts at 5 p.m. sharp that's going to be the cocktail hour the performance starts at 5 at 6 p.m. it's going to be at the park at Clifton Harris Heritage National Park and of course you yeah, can I get think there's a, another event on Saturday as well but no 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 that's the 10th okay yes it's February 10th so tickets can get uh, be selected where tickets we can go online or on our website which is talklifton.com and also you can call the park itself at 3629312 and that's where we can have tickets delivered to you and uh, you can also call, I guess, you can call the events department, 477-7105, and we will also have tickets brought to you. Well, Joy, thanks mm -hmm. so much for being with us today. We wish you every success for Jazz in the Park. Thank you. Well, stay with us at Jack on Sports is up next with Charles Fisher. What's up? Hey, what's up? What's y'all getting? Listen, I've been waiting to march down some logs here. Hi, I'm Matthew. I will be you guys waiting today. Can I take your order? Oh, I've been doing stuff for some group of dread. Y'all see this? Uh, see, this ain't gonna work. Fish condo. But how though? Don't leave our children with no fish in their future. Protect our sea. Protect our way of life. Protect the Bahamas. To learn how you can help, find us on Facebook at Bahamas Protected. See the future. Good morning, everybody. Three teams moving on in the government school championship, and one team they're gonna fight to play another day. Let's now go to the junior girls where we get things started. TA Thompson Scorpions had to hold off a pesky Raptors of CH3 who were playing to stay alive. Scorpions led 11 5 after one. The Raptors trimmed that to a 17 14 lead at the half. Then after three, it was 24 20. Still the Scorpions, and behind 11 points from Dominica Roll, the Scorpions move on with a 35 33 win. We're going to go back and we're going to take care of um, handling the ball. Uh, we give a lot of, we, we, we throw, turn over the ball a lot today and um, we leave a lot of layups out there. So we're going to go back and we're going to work on one or two things and the discipline that comes in listening. Um, we're going to go back and work on that and then we're going to get ourselves prepared for the championship. Junior boys and Donald Davis, they've been a fixture in the big dance for the last couple of years and they put the pressure on the lines of HL early to lead and in the final couple seconds, they put the pressure on once again. They wrap up this series easily, big time win, 53 to 13. It's all about putting in work. You know, um, the Bible says that as long as the earth be in it, there will be seed time and others. And that's my philosophy. So we work hard, always practicing. I'm preparing for this moment, and, and the guys came through tonight. Thank God. 
Now, the City Girls game one, that went right down to the wire. But this one was over from the beginning. C.I. Gibson, Rattlers, and C.I. Walker Knights. This one never in doubt, like I indicated. The Rattlers jumped out to a 9 zip lead, led 22 10 at the half, and cruised for a 43 21 win. We had a good game plan defensively. Um, the first game we didn't play the type of basketball we should have played, but we won the game. But we came out prepared and ready to play, and they did the job tonight. Well, we got to be continue to get better. Um, defensively, we got to continue to slide and rotate properly. Uh, make our free shots, which we did. Make our layups, which we did. Continue to do that. Continue to get better as a team. I told you three teams moved on, so it will only be fitting that the senior boys series between the Doris Johnson, Mystic Marlins and the Anatole Rogers Timberwolves will be going to a decisive Game 3 after the pennant winning Marlins staved off elimination with a 54-50 win. Uh, first of all, I just got to thank God for this victory. Um, you know, we went back to the drawing board after the loss on um, Monday. You know, it was quite disappointing, so we definitely had to tighten up on some things. You know, and, you know as, a, as a unit, you know, we decided to do just that, and you know, that was the end result of the game. You know, we stopped our game plan. We were solid, you know, in areas where we needed to be, you know, that allowed us to come on top. So definitely want to thank God for allowing us to, you know, just to stay focused, you know. So we got another big game, an even more important game on Saturday, so we're definitely looking forward to coming out doing exactly what we do best, just continue to um, play defense, you know, execute our offense, and we'll be just fine. Uh, there's no game today due to the Junior Junk Canoe Parade. Well, my favorite morning edition reporter, Jimmy Nita Screen, is coming right back following the break. Hey, have you heard? ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Whether you're on the move or just kicking back. Miss something on the news? It's there. Want to keep up with a live update? It's there. Or just want to listen to your favorite station? It's there too. Download the app now from the App Store and Google Play Store. Final look at what our satellite pitch is showing that all from a boundary across the southeast Bahamas, but there is a new one that's moving into the northwest Bahamas that will eventually merge with that all from a boundary later on today, triggering uh, periods of clouds and maybe one or two passing shower in the mix as well. The forecast for today, partly sunny and mod with a moderate breeze in place, an isolated shower likely near that from a boundary. 78 degrees will be a high temperature. And tonight we are looking at partly cloudy once again with passing showers in the forecast, low temperature getting down to a comfortable 60. 69 degrees. The extended weather forecast, uh, upper 70s, uh, right through the cycle. We'll eventually get back into the 80s sometime on Thursday of next week. But a few showers remaining in our forecast right into Sunday, and then things drying out as of Monday. A beautiful week shaping, shaping up with lots of sunshine. Jimmy Nita. Well, thanks, Basil. That's going to do it for the morning edition. Make sure to join us this evening at 6 p.m. for the start of our two-hour newscast. I'm Jimmy Nita Swain. Make it a great day, Bahamas.